getting out until the end of the game about how the art teacher sent me out of the room for talking, for talking. Pearl pinched my arm when she took me out of art. All our teachers at the Little Red Schoolhouse were called by their first names. She's a boss, a real meanie. I wait to see if she's listening. Her eyes don't meet mine, even for a flash. I keep going as if more will get her attention. What's wrong with talking and painting? Lunch was yucky anyway. She's still not looking down at me as we climb the marble staircase of the old Whitney Mansion. I prattle more softly, becoming quiet under the gauzy haze streaming from the skylights. We are often the only two people in the gallery. It is as, it is as if I am there without a grown-up. The silence, the soft light, and not having her attention make me feel lonely. But because she is so peaceful, I am also relieved. Her usual sharp, sudden movements are slow, and she seems calm as we glide from one painting to another. I hear the rain beating on the skylight. Everything is so muted, I could be dreaming there with my mother, who could disappear into the paintings. She stares at the pictures in the same way she will, years later, stare into a mirror when she is depressed, nearly catatonic, deep in and far away. The winter I am seven, my best friend is Janie Broadman, whose parents care about being Jewish. My parents have ironed themselves out of their Jewish immigrant origins <coughs> and have Christmas trees. Except this year, when my father announces without ex explanation that there will be no tree, my mother takes my side and argues for a tree all through supper. The next day, as we come down 8th Street at dusk, with shop lights casting color on the hard-packed snow, she impulsively buys a small, fat spruce from the Italian with the trunk. <laughs> this time, my father isn't with us to carry it home across his shoulder. My mother pays quickly, as if she's buying on the black market, and tells me to pick up the top as she lifts the trunk. Suddenly, Janie's mother appears, greeting us, beaming. My mother smiles back grasping the tree with a gloved hand, blithely behaving as if there are no branches bobbing behind her and no small girl holding tight with mittens sticky with sap. I don't say a word. I am in awe of my mother's <coughs> pluck to have stood up to my father, who was the boss in those days, to get the tree and now to face Mrs. Broadman red-handed. <laughs> the Lowe's movie theater in our, is our Egyptian palace of burnished brass right there on Sheridan Square. When my mother lets me play hooky on a school day and we sit together on red velvet in the darkness, we are in perfect collaboration, conspirators against the regular world of homework and housework. Every time we are at the movies together, there is the exquisite pleasure of the lights dimming, the crackle of cellophane as I open the box of chewy jello dots. This moment of transport out of this world, into the movie, me and my mom and Betty Grable. In the years that followed my mother's death, I was left in a void. She had been my life's work. This woman I'd allowed to be the interrupter was gone. There was all that time and space I'd wanted but now couldn't use. I was lightheaded and dizzy having balance problems and hints of the old agoraphobia. But because my nature wants to come to the party, I could, also be the, I could also let go of my gloom. Slowly, I discovered that concentrating on what interested me rather than on what worried me was a reliable way to change the channels. <laughs> I was relieved to be writing again, to find I could be seduced by work instead of tumult. Most days, I'm able to admit to my old addiction to drama and chaos and remain committed to giving it up. Forgo it completely, not a chance. But the prospect of doing these last years differently continues to be intriguing. My relationship with my mother keeps getting better and better. I can approach her now and take from the family album what I need. I can even return to the mischievous, mischievous little girl who runs wildly around the garden as her mother holds out a sweater, insisting on protection 
from the evening chill. I am shrieking with glee as I skip just ahead of her, proud of my speed, and happy to be fooling around with my mom. <laughs> Well, I think they're filled. Oh, they are. So. <laughs> Is it well, possible to 